We here at iCademy Middle School are passionate about growing independent learners, and we just know that that is not possible with the help of you as parents. In the next couple of slides, you are going to see a tutorial with some of the tools that we believe are going to be best used by you guys to help generate awesome conversation at home, but also help hold our children accountable um, to the work and the responsibilities that they have in their online learning. After the tutorial, there are some additional resources that fit with this idea of accountability, such as internet safety and what things and parameters you as parents can set up for yourselves and your kiddos at home. We know that it takes a village, right? And us teachers are working hard to inspire that accountability, that planning and that organization with your kiddos. And we wanted to help inspire that accountability piece with you guys too. So take a second to go through the next um, couple of slides, the couple tutorials that we have here and um, we're excited to be able to do this right alongside of you. All right guys so we just want to walk through a uh, pretend student here um, so that you can really get a great um, insight into some of the tools that we have for you guys. Some of the things that we want you to uh, be aware of is that when you log into your students home page you can see that glimpse of their score right at a glance, which is really, really just fabulous, okay? And today, we're going to walk through one of these classes to see what tools you as parents can use to best um, have conversations, healthy conversations at home, and some of the things that we do to help make your students' experience in class the best. So first and foremost, when you log into your students' class, you see the agenda for the day here, as well as the last thing that they did. Okay. Also on the landing page here, there are just um, visuals or any sort of extension of the lesson or things that we teachers deem you know, important for your kiddo to know. The greatest thing that you guys can utilize, and I'll open up this um, sidebar here, is the calendar function, okay? And here is why. We work our tails off to ensure that your child has a, an average of 60 minutes worth of work a day per class. So instead of looking at, Mama Mia, there's, you know, five things here for my kid to do today, we really want us to look at it like, these five things are going to add up to 60 minutes worth of time, okay? Now, right now, I am in our pretend kiddo, Chris P. Bacon. Yes, Mr. Tyler came up with that name. I'm just in one of his classes, just looking at the day view here. What's beautiful about this calendar function is that when you click on an item that's due, bam, you are able to go right to that item, okay? so. Anytime you see one of these, um, that means there's a comment here. So this particular item, guys, is just, hey, it's time to read for 10 minutes today. When they do that, and this is a timer that they have every Tuesday and Thursday, once they do that and they spend their time on that, then they can go to the next thing, instruction, okay? Um, this is also due today. Their job is to go through here, read this, take the notes on it, um, these are videos, you can't see it now, but they're videos for the kiddos. Go all the way down through, click on the textbook when you need to, all of these things, and then, there we go, then they can go back and work their way through the checklist. This is such an important tool. Another thing I want to show you guys is you are going to see that our work is um organized into different sessions. So if you ever get lost on anything, you can go into the session that we're currently in, go into the week that we're currently in, and see the week's worth of work that we have for our students. This semester, we've organized things so that there are these icons that go with certain things. So every week on Mondays, we do journal writing. Every Tuesday and Thursday, we do our Just Right Reading book. Every Wednesday, we do specific um, we do specific grammar lessons in ELA. Um, and then Quick Checks will have this Show What You Know um, icon in it. So that's something that's cool to look at. I want to spend some time talking about this Performance tab here. So this is the one that I'm in right now, the Performance tab. There's a lot of really great things here, okay? 
When you go into your child's performance tab, you automatically go into the grades section of this. Okay, anytime you look in the due column and uh, an item is read, that means that it is past due for your child. If there is a date in which the child submitted it, but there is the due date is still read, that means that they submitted it late. If the due date is black, that means that that is an upcoming due date. You know that your kiddo submitted any sort of work when there is a date in the submitted column. If your child gets a zero and there's not a date that's submitted here, that means that they never turned that in. That is considered late work. Now, we see here that Crispy Bacon not only turned um, his note check in ahead of time, he earned 100% on it, it is completed, but there is a um, little dialogue box here, dialogue bubble here, that says that he has feedback on this particular assignment. Okay, so when you click on that, you can see what the assignment was, what he turned in for the assignment, and then here's the feedback that I gave him, just a, a, a silly little gift that said, Yahoo, you did great. I want you to pay attention as parents to that feedback, just like in a brick and mortar school when we write, you know, comments in the side margins or notes on an assignment. That's what this feedback is for. And it really, really is a powerful, powerful tool. Um, another piece of this um, performance tab is the activity tab here. And this is so important to me, you guys. This is the running total that your child spends in a course for the whole semester. Now, obviously, Crispy Bacon is way, way, way behind, right? This then breaks it down by day to how much time they spend in this particular course in one day. And then even a little bit more on how much time they spent on each item in that particular day. So what I love about this tool is that we can look at the time here and go, yikes, Crispy Bacon, you only spent two seconds on this assignment. That does not seem like enough time. That's a great conversation for mom and dad to have with, with their kiddo. Or if we're seeing the trend that they're only spending five, 10, 15 minutes a day in, in their class when it should be 60 minutes a day on average in class, that's a good conversation conversation tool to have too. This is what we check as teachers when we send those missing reports or the um, low performance emails and, and um, messages to you guys. One additional thing that you guys are going to see is this badges tab here. Um, we have this tab um, for students and when a student gets a badge it comes across their screen here with this little graphic. So Crispy Bacon got the Great Friend Award and the Overcoming an Obstacle Award. So when he logs in, if he w earns an award, this message will pop across his screen along with this graphic. We saw you being a great friend today. Thank you for showing a culture of caring. And so as students students gather awards, they will earn certain privileges and, and, and other Yahoo things. But we're really using this as a great way to like increase motivation and, and get kiddos excited. Okay, and of course the other function is this webmail function. I wish this button was clickable right now, but as of right now it's not. But that reminder of the numbers of how many webmails a kiddo has in their webmail really is a great thing. Okay, and you can see that here. Parents, you also have this tool. So I hope that this little tutorial um, helps make second semester the best semester we've had yet. And please let us know if you have any questions. So one of our main focuses for second semester is going to be digital citizenship and what our digital footprint looks like. And we just wanted to share some of these great reminders with how um, to monitor your child's own digital habits. This is a great article that we found in parenting.com. Um, you can go to the link that I have here for you. Um, but some of these are just really great reminders, knowing what your children's habits are, having access to any sort of social media that they have at, at all times, um, keeping the computer in a central location. We cannot share enough about how important it is to have their device in a central location, not only for the intentionality of doing schoolwork, but also for the safety and and good healthy habits. We highly, highly recommend that um, devices in bedrooms are just 
not the best, especially um, when it comes to, to creating those healthy ind independent habits online. Lots of you have been interested in learning more about web filter software <clears throat> and um, what you can do at home on your own home network. We do have a web filter um, option here. We also have a very strong filter both on campus and one when your students, when our students take their devices home. But there are other um, pieces that you at home can, can input into your own family structure. So such as these that we have here, NannyNet, PureSight PC, My Mobile Watchdog, and K9. And a lot of them are very inexpensive, if not free. So check these out and see what works best for you and your family, if that is something that you feel like is a need. One of the trickiest parts of um, this idea of technology being completely integrated with almost everything that we do in this world now is the trends that come with that. They are ever changing and ever growing and something that we ourselves as educators in the virtual world but also what we recommend for you guys is some tools to help keep up with those tech trends. So the Family Online Safety Institute or FOSSI encourages parents and kids to have open discussions about what technology rules are, what are good examples of um, technology contracts, what are new apps that I need to be knowing about. CommonSenseMedia.org is another fabulous um, resource for you guys. And, and for us, um, these aren't necessarily about rules as much as they're about conversations and setting up people for success. And so here are some, but if you um, as a family decide that, that they're not a fit for you, there are tons of outlets that are there to help you and your family keep up with those tech trends. Here are some additional resources that we just um, feel like fit the mission and vision of iCademy, uh, but also as parents ourselves and, and, and adults who care about kiddos and their online and digital footprint, um, we, we've gone through these and, and, and we just really feel like they're great resources for you to look through and talk about with your kiddos. The end in mind for this entire thing, guys, is to help you guys feel confident and successful and accountable for your child's learning here at iCademy. Thank you for all that you do. And like we said, it takes a village. Please let us know if you have any questions.